give it up for Frank Trainer. So many years ago, uh, when my wife and I were still living in our hometown of Buenos Aires, Argentina, we found out that the planetarium in the Museum of Natural History in New York has a show called Journey to the Stars, yeah, narrated by Whoopi Goldberg. And I thought to myself, that must be a lot of fun to do on LSD. <laughs> I mean, look at my... <laughs> And to be honest with you, people tell me, you say that about everything. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> if I could have my way, I would get LSD legalized with a protest that would go, what do we want? Legal LSD, when do we want it? Time is an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's the thing that I wanted to do the most when we went to New York in 2011. Back then, we're living in Argentina. We don't have money for a trip like that. But luckily for us, my mom had just died, and she left us some money. <laughs> God, I'm so lucky. I'm just so lucky, right? Um, we ju had just about enough for like a 20-day trip, staying at the cheapest, horrible room we found in, in this horrible apartment in the Upper West Side from a guy named Checkers at like 30 bucks a night. <laughs> I was like, sure, we'll go there. If you, if you don't kidnap us, please, we're from another country. We're worth nothing here. Um, now, the only thing left in New York City is to actually find some LSD, you know? New York is everything we ever dreamed of. We go to all the museums, we go to Central Park, we go to see jazz in every bar because we are pretentious people, as you can see from my, my outward robe. Um, we do something all grown up Latino tourists do, and we buy entire new wardrobes for both of us at H&M and Forever 21. <laughs> again. <laughs> and then we go to see a musical on Broadway, but to be honest with you, I don't remember which one, because I don't really care about musicals. I, I think that going to see a musical is like going vegan or having a child. You just do it to tell people about it, you know, that's, that's about all you need. And then we go to a Chinese restaurant that on the outside looks like a Mexican restaurant. And then we go to a bar that on the inside looks like a pharmacy. Because who would have thought in New York everything and everyone would be pretending to be someone they're not, right? It's so confusing up there. But still, so far, no signs of the LSD. And then one day, our host, Checkers, very casually in conversation, just drops, <laughs> I'm an acid head. <laughs> uh, acid head? That, that really blows my mind. We get to have a name? <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> People usually just call me a drug addict, which sounds more on point. This is so much better. Acid head. It's like when you call herpes a cold sore. <laughs> sure, that's what it is. It's, yeah, that's what it is. So basically, uh, he gives me and my wife both one drop of pure LSD one morning, and we're off to the museum. Our plan is to take the LSD the second we get in the subway, because we calculate that it's gonna give us enough time to get to the museum, pay for admission, and make it to the planetarium to the show right before the show starts and the LSD hits. What we don't calculate is that uh, when we get to the museum, of course, there's gonna be a line of people waiting to get in. Duh, we're the worst tourists in the world. And that while we're waiting in that line, surrounded by hundreds of people, the LSD is gonna start hitting, and that it's gonna be the strongest LSD we have ever taken. And I'm slowly starting to freak out. I'm starting to freak out, but I don't wanna tell my wife that I'm freaking out because I don't want her to freak out too. So I just like try to control myself and I just go, like, hey, um, would you like to, to go outside uh, to catch some fresh air for like a minute or two? And then my wife looks at me and goes like, yeah, let's go, I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, I'm freaking out. You are so made for each other. <laughs> and we go out to catch some fresh air for like a minute or two, which turns out to be four hours in Central Park, <laughs> thinking everyone is a cop and is after us. <laughs> And that's when we realize this is not just the strongest LSD we've ever done. This is actually probably the first time we've ever done LSD in our lives. This is not what we get in Argentina. This is first world LSD. <laughs> 
You know, it's a thing we get like the wish version of LSD, which is just like you're a little hyper and have fun and, and happy and that's about it. This is like, we're starting to see things. Like things are moving, things are coming alive. I think Jesus is right behind me. I don't want to turn around. Everyone is accompanying us after us. But also, this is the first time that we're seeing like the little like, you know, when you move your hands. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? And you see like there's a million hands behind it. But again, we don't want to do it because we're paranoid and thinking that if we do that, the cops, who is everyone around us, are going to know we're high on LSD and they're going to you know, arrest us or something. So we have to figure out a way to enjoy that. And we go like, hey, did you see the tree? <laughs> hey, look at the bird. And then we go to the John Lennon Memorial, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan, as you can see, by my <laughs> trying to look like him. It's like I have Ringo Starr's nose, though, but like the rest, I can be John. Um, and like we have this moment of being like, John Lennon, he died here. He died for our sins. <laughs> <laughs> And then finally, after four hours, you know, we, 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 we control ourselves, we get a grip of ourselves, and we go back to the museum. And we get to the museum, and, and when we get in, we're like, okay, let's go, the, the show's about to start, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then this old man and his granddaughter stops me to ask me about the admission to the museum, something, and like, I could be like, fuck off, old man, I just keep going, but like, I'm so high and paranoid that I don't want him to think, no, he avoided me because he's high on drugs. I'm gonna call the cops in Central Park on him and they're gonna catch him. So I try to answer this man's question. But the thing is that at this point of the LSD, faces are not faces anymore. <laughs> and gestures are not gestures anymore. And I can't tell if the granddaughter, who might as well be another old man, or maybe not even real at all, has some sort of physical condition or the sudden weird movements of their body or just the awkward positioning of a teenager who is a bit weird. I don't know. I don't want to stare and make them uncomfortable, but at the same time, I'm trying to answer the old man's question to get him out of my life. The thing is also, at this point of the LSD, English is not coming out of my mouth anymore. And I'm like, uh, and everything that I'm trying to say to this man just sounds like I'm saying, autoerotic asphyxiation. <laughs> and eventually he's like, you know what, I'm done with you. And he walks away. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. And let's go to the planetarium now. And we get to the planetarium and we're going to get in. And because of the old man, we are late and the show has just started. And we have to wait two more hours for the next one. And I'm like, did you see what God just did to us, man? <laughs> so, okay, what do we do for two hours in this day? Let's go walk around the museum. It's a pretty cool museum after all, right? So we're like, okay, let's, let's go see a map to see where to go. The thing is that the lines on the map are moving all over the place. <laughs> all over the place. It's insane. It's like a, it's, it's like a, what's this guy? But whatever, a painter name. I forgot it right now. It doesn't matter. It's a joke. Uh, and even the little stick figure man that marks the you are here is running around the entire map, <laughs> which gives you this very LSD moment of thinking, of course, we're all one and we're everywhere, right? <laughs> so then we just decide to walk around in circles in the room where the entrance of the planetarium is, and we see the same things a million times for two hours with the fear and paranoia that people might think that it's crazy that we're looking at the same things over and over again and over again, and maybe they will call the, call the cops in Central Park on us. I don't know, I'm terrified. But then finally, after two hours of looking at the same things, it's time to go to the show, and we make it to the planetarium, and we go in, and the wait was totally worth it, because for the next 25 minutes, we float in outer space, and the voice of Whoopi Goldberg narrating it fills inside of me like when Whoopi Goldberg was inside Patrick Swayze in the movie Ghost. <laughs> not because in New York City everything and everyone is pretending to be someone they're not, but because we're all one and we're everywhere, right? I had a chance to go back to New York this year, uh, a couple months ago on tour to do some shows after that. That was like my last trip. And then like 20 years later, oh, 10, 11 years later, I went back. And the good thing about LSD is that I've done so much LSD in my life that I have no memory left anymore. I don't remember anything. <laughs> I don't even know how I tell my stories anymore. But it's so it's great because it gives me a chance to experience things for the first time again all the time, which is wonderful. So I was walking around New York and like embracing the beauty of the city and looking at everything and all the lights and the buildings and the people. And I thought to myself, this must be a lot of fun to do on LSD. <laughs> Thank you.